I think we may finish it today, Prabhu. Okay. Then, then you can do test tomorrow. It's a question whether I work with the slideshow or work with the book, the text. Mm. As you feel comfortable, there start <clears throat> okay you are muted by host Okay. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our Ongoing study of the nectar of instruction for the Bhakti Shastri course. Last night we began looking at text number nine and we were hearing about the hierarchy among different places. You know, some places are even more powerful and purifying than other places. Not everything is the same. It's not all one. You know, we're, we're following the Vaishnava philosophy as taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. For the Mayavadis, it's all one. Everything is one. They see the whole material world as illusion. And they don't give much importance to holy places. But for the devotees, we give a lot of importance to holy places and some places are even more important than others. So we were hearing about the hierarchy as described by Rupa Goswami. He was talking first of all about the Vaikuntha planets, how the Vaikuntha planets are superior to the material world. Right? And then, higher than Vaikuntha, higher than Vaikuntha, Ganga Prasad Prabhu, do you know what's after Vaikuntha? Vaikuntha is Mathura. Mathura, right. Why? Lord Krishna took, took his appearance there. Yes, the birthplace of Lord Krishna, Mathura. 
Right? There's Mathura district and there's the Mathura capital, the, the, the city or the town. And the, I think they're speaking about the town because they talk about the birthplace of Lord Krishna. So Krishna's birthplace is there in the, in the town of Mathura. And there's a temple built there now, a big temple. There's also a mosque just next door. <laughs> so it's interesting to go there. And after Mathura then, Ganga Prasad Prabhu? Higher than Mathura? The, the forest of, the twelve forests of Vrindavan. Yes. Where Krishna had passed time with his cowherd girlfriends and their boyfriends. Right. Krishna performed Rasa Leela there in the forests of Vrindavan. So, that's even more special than Mathura because Krishna is there with his very intimate devotees, the gopis. And even higher than Mathura? Ayadam Mathura is Govardhan. Ayadam Vrindavan is Govardhan. Because? Because Krishna lifted it with his own hands and protected the devotees for days. Yes. So Govardhan Hill, very sacred, very special. When we go to visit Vrindavan, we like to go to Govardhan and perform Parikrama around the hill, 24 kilometers, quite a good walk. It takes about four, four and a half hours or five hours, depending on how fast you can walk. So Lord Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill and called all the devotees and all the cows also, they all came under the Govardhan hill. And Krishna protected everyone from the wrath of Indra. But then even higher than Govardhan hill? Is the Radha Kund. Yes. Why? Why is Radha Kund so special? Because Krishna had many pastimes with Radha and the cowherd girls and their mates there. Right. Radha Kund is even more sacred, more special than Govardhan Hill because Lord Krishna can enjoy a very intimate association there with Srimati Radharani. When he's having Rasa Leela, many gopis are present. And sometimes Radharani will get upset and she will go and leave the rasa dance because she sees Krishna with all the other gopis. And when Krishna picked up the Govardhan hill, everyone was there. Nanda Maharaj, Mother Yashoda, all the gopas and all the gopis, everyone, they were all under the hill. So Radharani didn't get an opportunity to really be close with Krishna. But at Radha Kund, it's very special. Only very intimate associates of Radha and Krishna are there to see the pastimes in that place. So, we want to point out that the worship, the, the respect which we give to Radha Kund is unique, really, that we're different from other sampradayas. The other Vaishnavas, they may come to Radha Kund and offer obeisances, but they don't have the same kind of reverence which the Gaudiya Vaishnavas give to Radha Kund. It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who personally uh, rediscovered the Radha Kund. It had been lost. Nobody knew where it was. Rupa and Sanatan were there, they didn't know where it was. Lord Chaitanya personally came there in Vrindavan and then he found out where he discovered it. Even the, the local people didn't know. But there was a place nearby, there was a village nearby which was like Aristagram and Krishna had killed Aristasura and after he killed Aristasura it was then that Radharani told Krishna, you have to 
bathe in the holy places, go and bathe in the holy rivers. So Krishna said, I don't need to go there, they'll come here. So all the holy rivers came there and poured their water and created Shamakund. And then Radha Kund was also created with the water from Manasaganga and the holy rivers. So Lord Chaitanya personally took his bath there. At the time when he came there, it was simply a rice field. And he took his bath there and told the devotees, this is Radha Kund. So later on, Rupa and Raghunath came and lived there and they were able to purchase the land and then gradually they got more support and people contributed and they were able to make the nice kunda which is there today. Actually there's a pastime that one man, he had a lot of money and he was going to take the money to Badarik Ashram in the Himalayas. But when he was en route, he had a dream and in the dream Lord Krishna came to him and told him, you should go to Radha Kun and give this money to Raghunath. He's, he needs the money to develop Radha Kun. So the man, was, he was on his way to Badrinath, he, he came back and he came to Radha Kun and he found Raghunath and he gave him all the money he had. So Raghunath could develop Radha Kun more, make a nice bathing ghat. And gradually, more and more people came and contributed and they could make it, you know, the place which it is today. It's quite big and it's very, very nice. So, Radha Kund was very important to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And because it was so important to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Rupa Goswami also understood that this is a very important place. Why was it so important to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? Because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is Lord Krishna himself, but he is cultivating the mood of Srimati Radharani. And he wants to experience that Radha Bhav, the loving mood which Srimati Radharani has, in her service to Krishna. And this Radha Kund is as dear to Radharani as dear to Radharani as uh, well this Radha Kund is practically non-different from Radharani. And just as we give great respect to Srimati Radharani, we also have to give great respect and honor this Radha Kund. It's not different from Srimati Radharani. So for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas it's very important because we want to get the blessings of Radharani to serve Krishna. Her blessings are very... She gives the greatest pleasure to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna likes pleasure, he likes to enjoy, he wants pleasure and he gets the greatest pleasure from Srimati Radharani. And Srimati Radharani, she gets even more pleasure than Krishna. By serving Krishna, she gets the greatest pleasure. And that's why Krishna wants to take the mood of Radharani, because Radharani is enjoying more than Krishna. So we give all importance to Srimati Radharani. Of course, she's the embodiment of Ladini Shakti, the Ladini Shakti, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. So we offer all of our respect to Srimati Radharani. She is the attractor of the attractor of Cupid. Krishna is known as Madan Mohan, the attractor of Cupid, and Radharani is Madan Mohan Mohini. She can attract Krishna. So very, very special. This, of course, this teaching, this philosophy, this is a philosophy unique to the Gaudiya Vaishnavas as taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so the other people, they may come to Radha Kund, they're coming because of Krishna. 
but they don't appreciate so much Srimati Radharani. Right? So, I was looking through the objectives, what we want to cover, the different points which we're meant to cover in this course. So it's mentioned, huh? discuss Rupa Goswami's Upadesha Saram, the es essence of all advice. Would someone like to tell us what was the Upadesha Saram, the essence of all advice? We covered that already, right? We have some hands. We have some hands. Yes, who do we have? Tukaram Prabhu. The sum and substance of all the Upadesha is to 24 hours engage in Krishna consciousness. 24 hours a day to engage in Krishna consciousness. Specifically by doing what kind of activities? By constantly engaged, engaging in chanting, hearing, and this is of Krishna, serving Krishna with ourselves. Yes, we should be constantly absorbed in chanting the holy name of Lord Krishna and discussing his qualities and his pastimes and his uh, activities, right? Nam, Guna, Rup, Lila. All of these things, this is the business of the devotees of Krishna, to constantly relish and discuss and recite all the glories of Lord Krishna, 24 hours a day. And one can also, it was recommended, one could also reside in Braja, if possible. All right, so... Rupa Goswami has given us the Upadesha, uh, the Upadesha Saram. What is the relevance of this Upadesha Saram to ISKCON? How do we relate to this as devotees of Krishna in the ISKCON movement? The, this Upadesha Saram, Rupa Goswami is talking about residing in Braja and 24 hours a day chanting the holy name. So how, how is this relevant in our ISKCON society? Would anyone like to tell? What, what is your thinking on this? Hmm? I think there are many hands. There are many hands? Oh good, let's hear from them. Ananta Pandit Prabhu? Hare Krishna. Jadi relasi apa nama hubungan antara apa nama upaya sesarami dengan kon adalah jadi di dalam ini bagaimana ajaran-ajaran ini rupa Guruswami ini diaplikasikan dengan apa kon berapa sahaja sahaja bakti. In our uh, sadhana, bhakti, like uh, chanting, our prescribed rounds, 16 rounds, uh, following the Vaidhi Bhakti principles, and gradually we will renounce the urges, and after that one becomes steady. And by the guidance of a spiritual master, one then get permission to stay in Vraja and get further guidance there. So, under the guidance of a more advanced devotee. So, is that actually necessary for all of us in ISKCON that we have to go and reside in Vraja? To develop pure prema bhakti, uh, to develop the attachment for the holy name, 
and uh, hearing about the Lord's pastimes. And so is he saying we have to go to Vrindavan to do that? Well, I don't think that's true. I don't agree. Not that every... Do you think you cannot become a pure devotee unless you go and reside in Vrindavan? No, we can become pure devotee, but the mood must uh, seem like as Vrindavan. We can, we, we, we can do it in a temple like that, near, uh, stay in your temple, uh, doing, doing sadhana also. Yes, right. And uh, associate with Yes, we can do it in our own temple. We can, can create the Vrindavan atmosphere wherever we are. We can create the mood of Vrindavan, the Vrindavan atmosphere. We have Tosi, cultivate nice Tosi, and you have the deities, you have your temple room, you have the holy name. We have the, the books, the, the, the Bhagavatam. We don't need to go to Vrindavan, but we can create the Vrindavan mood wherever we are. This is the purpose of ISKCON. Not that everybody has to go and live in Vrindavan and sit down in Vrindavan to become a pure devotee. But wherever we are, we can make that place as good as Vrindavan. We can have pictures even, you can take nice pictures of the Govardhan Hill and you can put up nice pictures if you like to meditate on the Govardhan Hill. We can have also, we can keep cows, just like you're in Bali. Do you have cows there? Does anybody keep cows in Bali? Yes, yeah, Mara, we have cows. Good. So that's very nice. Yes, we have them people. I that. So we keep, keep cow, we can see it all in relation to Krishna. We can see it all as Vrindavan. Wherever we are, that is Vrindavan. The devotees are there, the ch everything is there. It's a replica of Vrindavan. So, this is our mood in ISKCON. And Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission is to create these holy places around the world. And, you know, it's the presence of the devotees that make a place holy. And Prabhupada didn't have a very good opinion about Radha Kund because he had seen that the, some of the people there, many of them are quite degraded and they're not really qualified to be living in Radha Kund. One time, one of the devotees from Vrindavan, he had gone there to Radha Kund and Prabhupada found out. Prabhupada sent one of his senior men there to go and bring him back. Don't let him stay there. Tell him to come back here. Prabhupada wasn't eager for us to go there to Radha Kund. He liked us to be in our temples, stay in our Iskon temples. And that's where we can do good hearing and chanting, we will hear Prabhupada's teachings, we will get the proper mood and the proper message. Okay, so thank you Prabhu. Uh, all right, so then we spoke about the hierarchy of spiritual places. The next, it says, explain why the importance of Radha Kund cannot be realized by devotees in other Vaishnav Sampradayas. Right? I've tried to explain that, that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has taught us the very special position and significance of Srimati Radharani. You should, we have to understand that before Lord Chaitanya's time, people were not worshipping Radha and Krishna. 
they would simply worship Krishna. It was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, through his teaching, he explained the position and the importance of Radharani, that she is the she is the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna, and Lord Krishna is never alone, but he's with his eternal consort in the form of Srimati Radharani. And so it was Janava Devi, the consort of Lord Nityananda, she would often go to Krishna temples and she would add a deity of Radharani beside the deity of Krishna. So, you know, and we're seeing like in the last 500 years, it's become more popular for Radha and Krishna to be there. But previously, you'll find it was just Krishna, Krishna on his own. Prabhupada never liked these pictures. If somebody painted a picture with just Krishna and maybe some light, some effulgence coming out of the head of Krishna, Prabhupada said, this is Maya body. He said, this is the impersonal mood. They simply think like that, that it's all energy, just energy. Krishna is just energy. And they're thinking the Brahman is the Supreme and Krishna comes from the Brahman. So Prabhupada was very particular about things. He said, Krishna is never alone. We have Krishna Balaram, we have Radha Krishna, we have Krishna and Mother Yashoda. We don't just have Krishna on his own. So this is due to the teaching of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Okay, uh, then explain why the gopis are considered the most exalted of all the devotees. Why are the gopis considered the most exalted? Well, that's going to come up. Maybe when we go to the text, we can see that. Let's go back to the text. I'll share the screen. All right. And we've got the text. I'll find the text. Hmm. Somewhere. Okay? Can everyone see? Are you seeing the text? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. All right. Who can chant the verse? Anybody knows how to chant the verse? Who is there? Gita Anjali Prabhu. Valmiki Prabhu will give you a chance. Gita Anjali did it last night. Well, Miki, you're going yes, to Maharaj. you're going Hare to chant. please chant the verse. Vaikuntha Janito Vada Madhupuri Tatrapi Rasutsavad Vrinda Ranyam Udara Pani Ramata Tatrapi Govardhana Radha Kundam Ihapi Gopula Pate Prema Mrita Plavana Kurya Dasya Virajato Giritate Sevam Viveki Nakaha Very good, yes. And you can read the translation for us, the holy place. Yes, Maharaj. The holy place, known as Mathura, is spiritually superior to Vaikuntha, the transcendental world, because the Lord appeared there. Superior to Mathura, Puri is the transcendental forest of Vrindavan because of Krishna's Rasa Lila pastimes. And superior to the forest of Vrindavan is Govardhan Hill, for it was raised by the divine hand of Sri Krishna and was the site of his various loving pastimes. And above all, the uh, super excellent Sri Radha Kun stands supreme, for it is overflooded, overflooded with the ambrosial nectarian prema of the Lord 
of Gokula Sri Krishna. Where then is that intelligent person who is unwilling to serve this divine Radha Kund, which is situated at the foot of Govardhan Hill? All right, is thank you. Sure? Thank you. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. And then in the purport here, Srila Prabhupada talks about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he could not at first find Radha Kund. This means that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was actually searching for the location of Radha Kund. Finally, he found the holy spot. He took his bath in the small pond and told the devotees, this is Radha Kund. Later, the pond was ex excavated. Srila Rupa Goswami has given much stress to Radha Kund because of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's desire to find it. Who then would give up Radha Kund and try to reside elsewhere? Right? So we see, we see for example, in Mayapur, uh, there's a temple of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, and there he has a Govardhan hill, and he has also Radha Kund and Shama Kund at the side. They created their own Radha Kund and Shama Kund. So, like that. Let's go ahead, text number 10. Gita Indu Leka Maharaji, you can chant text number 10. Hare Krishna Maharaj, Karmi Bhyo Parito Hare Priyataya Vyaktim Yuyur Jnanina Te Bhyo Jnan Vimukta Bhakti Parama Prima Nishtakta Wow. And trans translation. Yes, please. The Shastis said that of all types of productive workers, he who is advanced in knowledge of the higher values of life is favored by the Supreme Lord Hari. Out of many such people who are advanced in knowledge, jnanis, who, one who is pra practically liberated by virtue of his knowledge may take to devotional service. He is superior to others. However, one who has actually attained prem, prema, pure love of Krishna is superior to him. The gopis are exalted above all advanced devotees because they are always totally dependent upon Krishna, the transcendental cowherd boy. Among the gopis, Srimati Radha Rani is the most dear to Krishna. Her kund lake is as profoundly dear to Lord Krishna as this most beloved of the gopis. Who then will not reside at Radha kund and in a spiritual body surcharged with ecstatic devotional feelings, Ren a prakrit bhav, rendering loving service to the divine couple Shri Shri Radha Govind, who perform their Ashtakalya Leela, their eternal eightful daily pastimes. Indeed, those who execute devotional service on the banks of Radha Kund are the most fortunate people in the universe. Thank you. So, we can see here, a hierarchy among the devotees. First of all, it says, there are many types of fruit of workers, so karmis. But somebody superior to the karmi, he's advanced in knowledge, the jnani. Jnani is better than the karmi, right? Because the karmi, the jnani has some knowledge of the higher values of life. And among the jnanis, one, some jnanis are very fortunate because they do devotional service. They come to, to take up devotional service. And so then out of people who do devotional service, one who develops prema, love of Krishna, he's the best. And of those who've got prema, the gopis, are the best. They're the most advanced of all the devotees because they are totally dependent upon Lord Krishna, the transcendental cowherd boy. So there are many, many gopis. Krishna has many gopis 
And among all the gopis, Srimati Radharani is the most dear to Krishna. So you can see the hierarchy among the devotees. And then it goes on to explain about Radha Kund, that her kunda is as dear as she is dear, not different from her. And he speaks, he speaks about the Astakaliya Lila, the Eightfold Pastimes. All right, so that's the hierarchy among the devotees. Uh, it's a long purport there, and Prabhupada's talking mainly about the, the karmi and the jnani, and how the jnanis become attached. Or among, among the karmis, first of all he explains about karmis, that some karmis are just vikarmis, they don't follow any principles, just gross materialists. Among the karmis, are some vikarmis, people who act without the guidance of Vedic knowledge. Those who act on the basis of Vedic knowledge perform sacrifices for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu and to receive benedictions from him. Right? So these, these are the, the karma yogis, you could say, like they act according to, or karma kandi, they act on the basis of Vedic knowledge, per perform sacrifices for the satisfaction of Lord Vishnu and to receive benedictions. So karma kandi that would be. And in this way, they're elevated to higher planets. Karmis are superior to the vikarmis. Yeah, well, vikarmis are sinful. Karmi is pious, he's not sinful, but he's materialistic. But Prabhupada said, they are faithful to the direction of the Vedas and are certainly dear to Krishna. They're dear to Krishna, but they're not able to go back to Godhead. Krishna will put them in higher planets, maybe they can even become demigods, like that. This is the position of the fruit of workers. So they're sometimes elevated to higher planets. On the other hand, uh, other people, the, the vikarmis, they become animals, trees and plants. That's their situation. So Prabhupada talks about materialists working hard like dogs and hogs. They have not understood the purpose of human life. Make many plans to become happy. Prabhupada talks about people making money, working hard all their life just to get money. And they don't think about the higher purpose of life. Materialists do not know that in the next life they will be degraded and that all their activities simply serve as parabhava their defeat. And Prabhupada quotes Srimad Bhagavatam, how they'll be defeated. So we should be eager to understand Atma Tattva. So that is a jnani. Out of thousands and even millions of ignorant people wasting their time gratifying the senses, one may come to the platform of knowledge, understand the higher value. Such a person is called a jnani. Jnani knows that fruit of activities will bind him and cause him to transmigrate. This a jnani. A jnani is superior to a karmi because he at least refrains from the blind activities of sense enjoyment. However, a jnani may be liberated from the ignorance of the karmis 
Although a jnani may be liberated from the ignorance of the karmis, unless he comes to the platform of devotional service, he is still considered to be in ignorance. Bahunam jnanmanamante jnanavam mam prapajante vasudev sarvamiti samahatma sudurlava. Right? When we, when the goal of knowledge is to surrender to Vasudev, Krishna. But such a soul is very rare. So the, the jnani, is, he becomes perfect when he, gets some devo when he gets knowledge of devotional service. And if he has no information about devotional service, he's still in ignorance. So Prabhupada quotes a verse I just quoted. So then Prabhupada goes on, after taking to devotional service, under the regulative principles, a person may come to the platform of spontaneous love of God, following in the footsteps of great devotees like Narada and Sanaka and Sanatan. The Supreme Personality of Godhead then recognizes him to be superior. The devotees who have developed love of God are certainly in an exalted position. So, of the devotees, the gopis are recognized as superior because they do not know anything other than satisfying Krishna. Right? Why are the gopis so, so wonderful? They don't know anything else except satisfying Krishna. And nor do the gopis expect any return from Krishna. Sometimes Krishna puts them into extreme suffering by separating himself from them. Nonetheless, they cannot forget Krishna. When Krishna left Vrindavan for Mathura, the gopis became most dejected, and spent the rest of their life simply crying in separation from Krishna. This means that in one sense they were never actually separated from Krishna. Hmm? So this is why the gopis are the best of all the devotees. Because they serve Krishna without any expectation of anything in return. They don't want anything for themselves. And they don't have any other purpose in life other than satisfying Krishna. They don't worry about their own name and reputation or their chastity. They will sacrifice everything for Krishna. So then Prabhupada goes on to explain, there is no difference between thinking of Krishna and associating with him. Rather, vipralamba seva, thinking of Krishna in separation as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu did, is far better than serving Krishna directly. Thus, of all the devotees who have developed unalloyed devotional love for Krishna, the gopis are most exalted. And out of all the exalted gopis, Srimati Radharani is the highest. Right? So, we want to understand this point about Vipralamba Seva. This is also mentioned here as one of the objectives which we want to understand. It's, it says, uh, discuss Srila Prabhupada, uh, no, dis, discuss how the principle of Vipralamba Seva re reflects Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission. Srila Prabhupada's mood and mission to serve Krishna in that mood, vipra lamba seva, in separation. That is the mood of the gopis. So Srila Prabhupada is teaching all of us to cultivate this mood of the gopis, serving Krishna in separation. And this was the mood of the Goswamis who were all followers of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Indeed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also felt separation from Krishna. 
he was cultivating that mood of separation from Krishna. He was living in Jagannath Puri and he would see the ocean there as the Yamuna and he would see the sand dunes as the Govardhan hill and he would see all the gardens around. It would remind him just of the, like he was in Vrindavan. And he would be anxious, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? One time he asked, where is Krishna? And Gadarha said, he's in the heart, he's in our heart. And when Lord Chaitanya heard it, he began to rip at his skin and try to tear his skin. He wanted Krishna to come out of his heart. And Gadarha Pandit had to pacify Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and tell him, just wait, just now he's coming, just calm down, just now he will come. And Mother Sachi was watching and she was very concerned when she saw her son try to rip open his heart and she really appreciated Gadarhar, how Gadarhar had taken care of Lord Chaitanya and pacified him and calmed him down. So Prabhupada also encourages us, all of us, to feel separation from Krishna. And in the mood of separation from Krishna, then we will chant the glories of Krishna and we will discuss topics of Krishna. This is the mood of the gopis. This is what the gopis did. When they would be burning in the fire of separation from Krishna, they would be able to pacify themselves by remembering the Lord's pastimes and chanting His name and discussing His wonderful qualities. So Srila Prabhupada wants all of us to advance in Krishna consciousness and our advancement depends on how much we can remember Krishna and if we can cultivate this mood of separation from Krishna then it will help us to become more absorbed in thinking of Krishna. All right, and then now talking about Srimati Radharani, why is she the best of all the gopis? We hear the gopis are the best of all the devotees. Now why is Srimati Radharani the best? What is so special about her? No one can excel the devotional service of Srimati Radharani. Indeed, even Krishna cannot understand the attitude of Srimati Radharani. Therefore, he took her position and appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just to understand her transcendental feelings. In this way, Rupa Goswami gradually concludes that Srimati Radharani is the most exalted devotee of Krishna and that her kunda Sri Radha Kund is the most exalted place. This is verified in a quotation from Lagu Bhagavatamrita as quoted in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Yatarada Priya Vishnos Tashya Kundam Priyam Tata Sarva Gopishu Saivaika Vishnu Atyantavalaba. Just as Srimati Radharani is dear to the Supreme Lord Krishna, Vishnu. So her bathing place, Radha Kund, is equally dear to Krishna. Among all the gopis, she alone stands supreme as the Lord's most beloved. Therefore, everyone interested in Krishna consciousness should ultimately take shelter of Radha Kund and execute devotional service there throughout one's life. This is the conclusion of Rupa Goswami in the 10th verse of Upadesh Amrita. So Srimati Radharani is described here that she has the, the greatest love for Krishna of all the devotees. She has the, the, of all the gopis who have pure love for Krishna, that her love and her mood in the service of Krishna is the most pleasing to Lord Krishna. There are specific qualities of Rad Srimati Radharani which particularly attract Lord Krishna. 
Of course, all the gopis, they are also expansions of Srimati Shri Radharani. But it's Srimati Radharani who is originally one with Krishna. Radha and Krishna are originally one, but they separated themselves for the pleasure of Lord Krishna. So as I said, Srimati Radharani embodies the Ladini Shakti, the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. And how does she give the Lord pleasure? There are, it's described, one of the qualities, special qualities of Radharani is her cooking. That she's a very wonderful cook. She got blessings from Durvasa Muni. The Durvasa Muni had come to her house and she had served him very nicely. And he gave her the blessing that whatever she cooks will be just like nectar. So every day Lord Krishna has to go out into the fields with the calves. And Mother Yashoda would usually cook for Krishna. But when she heard how Srimati Radharani had this blessing that everything she cooked would be like nectar, then she encouraged Radharani, please come, please come to our home and you can cook for Krishna. So she would come and she would cook the whole day. And she would have many different fires, hot fires. She'd be cooking and preparing foodstuffs to offer for the pleasure of Krishna. So that's one of her wonderful transcendental qualities for the service of Krishna. Another thing which she gives great pleasure to Krishna with is her dancing. Lord Krishna likes to dance and sometimes they will dance in the mood of the peacocks and Srimati Radharani will be able to dance. Of course, Rasa Leela is also there, but there are many gopis in Rasa Leela. <laughs> Radharani gets a bit upset when she sees all the other gopis there. All right? Uh, we have a PowerPoint. Let me go to the PowerPoint and we'll show you some of these points which are made here in the PowerPoint. Can everyone see PowerPoint? Everyone's able to see? Yes, yes, okay. Oh, what happened? <laughs> hmm? From here? Yes. Play from start. We don't need to read this. Harinam Chintamani. Oloka. Here's a nice verse. Someone, can someone read this verse? Someone who knows it? Sadhananda Ramchandra. Can read? Translation. Therefore, material senses cannot appreciate Krishna's holy name, form, qualities, and pastimes. But a conditioned soul is awakened to Krishna consciousness and renders service by using his tongue to chant the Lord's holy name and taste the remnants of the Lord's food. The tongue is purified. And gradually one comes to understand who Krishna really is. Yes, right. And this one? Preman Janat Churita Bhakti Vilocha Nena Santa Sadeva Shadanyeshu Viloka Yanti. Do I complete the verse? Or? No, it's okay. Just what's there. The pure devotees see Krishna in their heart of hearts with the eye of devotion tinged with the salve of love. Hmm. 
You can read this. When Krishna manifested himself in Braja, both the devotees and the non-devotees saw him within, with this eye, with this very eye. But only the devotees cherished him eternally, present in Braja, as the priceless jewel of their heart. Nowadays also, devotees see him in Braja in their hearts, saturated with devotion, although they do not see him with their eyes. The eye of devotion is nothing but the eye of the pure, unalloyed spiritual self of the Jiva. The form of Krishna is visible to that eye in proportion to its purification by the practice of devotion. When the devotion of the neophyte reaches the stage of Bhava Bhakti, the pure eye of the devotee is tinged uh, with the salve of love by the grace of Krishna, which enables him to see Krishna face to face. Brahma Samhita 38. Purport. That purport is from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, of course, he gave the commentary. So he's describing how to see Krishna with the eye of devotion, not with the material eyes. So coming to the hierarchy of spiritual places, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructed Rupa Goswami, Tadupari Goloka Vrindavan. That Goloka Vrindavan is the topmost region of the spiritual sky from Madhya Lila, 19, 154. So how is it that one location is higher than another? On what basis is this distinction made? Someone can read? Yes, please read, Manaji. The exchange of spiritual happiness between Krishna and his devotee, in which Krishna is controlled by his devotee, is compared to an ocean of nectar into which the devotee and Krishna plunge. This is the verdict of learned scholars who appreciate Krishna's opulence. Madhya Lila, 19, 229. Hare Krishna. So spir spiritual happiness. Krishna takes pleasure in being controlled. We can see Mother Yashoda binding Krishna. This is for Krishna's own pleasure. He's taking pleasure in this, the loving exchange with his mother. Maharaj can you continue reading? Yes, Maharaj. On the, on the platform of conjugal love, attachment for Krishna, rendering service unto him, the relaxed feelings of eternity and the feelings of maintenance all increase in intimacy. On the platform of conjugal love, the devotee offers his body in the service of the Lord. Thus, on this platform, the transcendental qualities of all five rasas are present. Madhya Lila, 19th chapter, 231-232. Right, so on the platform of conjugal love, all the other rasas are also there. The, on the pla platform of conjugal love, the devotee is also giving service to him. The feeling of fraternity, friendship, that's also there. The feeling of maintenance, like having parents also take care, that's all there. But on the, con on the platform of conjugal love, the devotee offers his whole body in the service of the Lord. So this is a special significance of this uh, conjugal love. The rasa of conjugal love is therefore considered supreme among all the different rasas. Yes, Maharaj Yes, Maharaj. During the rasa dance, Krishna did not exchange loving affairs with Radharani due to the presence of the other gopis. Because of the dependence of the others, the intensity of love between Radharani and Krishna was not manifest. Therefore, he stole her away. Madhya Lila 8102. Yeah, Krishna's dancing Rasa Lila, there are many, many gopis present. And different gopis, they come from different places. We know there's the, the Shruti Charas, the personified Vedas who come as gopis. And there's also the sages from the Naimisharanya forest who took birth 
in Vrindavan to be gopis so they could have conjugal love with Krishna. So there's many different groups of gopis who are all there. So this didn't help, this didn't make Radharani feel so comfortable with all the other gopis present and they're all dancing with Krishna. Therefore, Krishna has to satisfy Radharani. He stole her away. Yeah? Manaji? If Lord Krishna rejected the company of the other gopis for Srimati Radharani, we can understand that Lord Sri Krishna has intense affection for her. Madhya Lila 8103. So Giri Raj Swami, quoting in relation to this pastime, he's explaining that this pastime of Krishna stealing Radharani took place in Vrindavan at Vamsivat, and all categories of the gopis of Vrindavan were taking part. So there were there was limited intimacy because so many were there. So Krishna stealing Srimati Radharani away established her preeminent position that she's really the topmost personality. Yes, Manaji? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Finding herself treated equally with all the other gopis, Radharani displayed her tricky behavior and left the circle of the Rasa dance. Missing Radharani's presence, Krishna became very unhappy and began to lament and wander throughout the forest to search her out. Madhya Lila 8105. So this is in a different place. Krishna performs Rasa Lila in some different places. So in another place, we see that uh, Radharani displayed a tr She left the Rasa dance. And one, one pastime Krishna stole Radharani away and the other one Radharani herself left and Krishna has to go and look for her. So Giri Raj Maharaj explains, this pastime took place in the springtime at Govardhan with only the most exalted gopis participating. So there was more intimacy and consequently a higher rasa. Radharani is leaving, Krishna trying to find her and lamenting when he couldn't find her demonstrates how Krishna comes under the control of Radharani's love, which also means a higher rasa than in Vrindavan. Right? So the pastime over there in Govardhan was a, a little higher than what happened in Vrindavan. Yes, Manaji? Yes, Maharaj. Among the loving affairs of the gopis, Ramananda Rai continued, Srimati Radharani's love for Sri Krishna is topmost. Indeed, the glories of Srimati Radharani are highly esteemed in all revealed scriptures. Just as Radharani is most dear to Sri Krishna, her bathing place, Radhakun, is also dear to him. Among all the gopis, Srimati Radharani is supermost and very dear to Lord Krishna. Madhya Lila 898-99. Giri Raj Maharaj says, Only Radharani's closest gopi friends could participate in the pastimes at Radha Kund. So there was even more intimacy here than in Govardhan and thus a higher rasa. Okay, so now we have a chart here just to show you the difference between the different places and the different rasas, right? On the left side here in the bottom, Shantaras. Shantaras is in Vaikuntha and it, you, you will, we will see, we will find detachment from material desires an attachment to Krishna in Shantaras. And the stage of Dasharas, which is also there usually in Vaikuntha, we will see detachment 
and attachment to Krishna along with service. In Santa Ras is no service, but in Dasya Ras one will do service. And then Gorova Sakya Ras, Gorova Sakya Ras means it's like a relationship between Krishna and Uddhava. They're not equal. Uddhava doesn't think himself equal to Krishna. He gives a lot of respect to Krishna. So that's also in Vaikuntha, offering respect to Krishna. And there's, again, it's detachment and attachment and service. But when you come to the other kind of friendship, Vishramba Sakyaras, then there's, you're really equal. That's like the cowherd boys. They fight with each other and they climb on Krishna's back and Krishna can be defeated by another cowherd boy. So this is Vishramba, this is different from Gaurava Sakyaras. Gaurava Sakyaras, there's some difference. Although there's some friendship, they're not really equal. But Vishramba Sakyaras, they're equal. So you can see there's a different, there's another condition added, along with detachment and attachment, service, there's also confidence of fraternity, confidence of that friendship. And then parenthood, Vatsalyaras, which is also there in Vrindavan, you get, in addition to the other quality, you get also maintenance. The, the Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yashoda always want to feed Krishna and keep Krishna clean and protect him. And then in Madhurya Ras, you find Madhurya Ras, you find it in Vrindavan, it's also at Govardhan and it's also at Radha Kund. And with Madhurya Ras, there will be everything there as well as offering one's body for the service of the Supreme. So you can see the hierarchy among the different rasas there, different devotees, right? We put here, uh, it says, uh, and in intimacy and love increasing, right? And pleasure of Krishna increasing and pleasure of devotee increasing as you come to the higher ras. Madhurya ras, the topmost pleasure for Krishna and for the devotees and the greatest intimacy and love. Maharaji? Yes, Maharaj. Uh, Lord Krishna has made a firm promise for all time. If one renders service unto him, Krishna correspondingly gives him an equal amount of success in devotional service of the Lord. Madhya Lila. Yeah. Right, and here's the verse from Bhagavad Gita, which is quoted in the Madhya Lila also. Yes. Let should I read Maharaj? Yeah, please. Yes. Ye ye thamam prapadyante tam tataiva bhajam yaham mama vartmanu vartante manusya partha sarvasaha. According to Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita 4.11, as all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pratha. Yes. Go ahead. In Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 32, 22, it is said that Lord Krishna cannot proportionately reciprocate devotional service in the Madhurya Rasa. Therefore, he always remains a debtor to such devotees. Mm. The devotees in Madhurya Rasa, they, they give everything for Krishna. They'll give their whole body for Krishna's service. So Krishna says, I can't repay you. I'm a debtor. I can't pay you back. Please read more. I am not able to repay my debt for your spotless service, even within a lifetime of Brahma. Your connection with me is beyond reproach. Reproach. You have worshipped me, cutting off all domestic ties, which are difficult to break. Therefore, please let your own glorious deeds be your 
So famous, the very famous words of Lord Krishna that he says in Naparayeham, I'm not able to repay you for what you've done for me. You've done so much for me. You gave up everything. They gave up their husbands or their family that could be rejected by society because they came to serve Krishna. But Krishna tells them, your own deeds will have to be your compensation. So it's, it's like that for devotees also. Devotees also who performed uh, sankirtan and go out preaching and distributing Prabhupada's books. They're doing such a glorious service. And how can they be thanked? How can we repay them? We, we cannot really thank them enough because they're doing such wonderful service, they have to be satisfied with their own deeds. They have to be satisfied. That's their compensation, that their own glorious activities are for their, for their compensation. So we have to be convinced that you're doing the highest service by preaching and distributing Krishna consciousness. And actually devotees who go out on Sankirtan and distribute Krishna consciousness, they're in the mood of the gopis. They're the most exalted devotees. Because they have, that's the mood of the gopis. To give Krishna consciousness, to sacrifice everything for the pleasure of Krishna. Yes, Maharaji? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Although Krishna's unparalleled beauty is the topmost sweetness of love of Godhead, his sweetness increases unlimitedly when he is in the company of the gopis. Consequently, Krishna's exchange of love with the gopis is the topmost perfection of love of Godhead. Krishna and his devotees become perfectly intimate in conjugal love of Godhead. In other mellows, the Lord and the devotees do not enjoy transcendental bliss as perfectly. Mm -hmm. So, this is Majjalila 8, 94, describing the perfection there in the dealings between the gopis and Krishna and how they give the greatest pleasure to Lord Krishna. And the gopis themselves, they're getting even more pleasure. So, discussing why Srimati Radharani is very dear to Krishna now, we're going on, and there's a verse here quoted. Let's see the translation. The, yeah. Someone else like to read? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, please read. When the gopis began to talk among themselves, they said, Dear friends, the gopi who has been taken away by Krishna to a secluded place must have worshipped the Lord more than anyone else. Madhya Lila 8, 100. Right. Uh, so the other gopis, they saw that Krishna was missing. And he'd gone off with another gopi. They found his footprints. And they saw that Krishna was walking with the footprints of a young woman. And so they understood that this woman, she must have worshipped Krishna more than anyone else. So the, the gopis appreciated that because she'd been taken away by Krishna, she must have been very qualified. She must have given Krishna so much pleasure. So this is Srimati Radharani's unique position. Yeah, continue reading. Among the gopis of Vrindavan, Srimati Radharani and another gopi are considered chief. But when we compare the gopis, it appears that Srimati Radharani is most important because her real feature expresses the highest ecstasy of love. The ecstasy of love experienced by the other gopis cannot be compared to that of Srimati Radharani. 
Madhya Lila 8161. Yes, go ahead. Raja Gopis can attain the advanced states of Mahabhava known as Rudha, advanced, and Anirudha, highly advanced. In Modana Adhirudha Bhava, the love of Srimati Radhika touches highest of ecstasy unknown to all the other gopis. Jai Bhadharma. Mm. So, Srimati Radharani is on the highest position of transcendental love. We're going to just take a few minutes to discuss about bathing and residing at Radha Kund, because this is one of the objectives also, that we want to understand Prabhupada's mood uh, discuss Prabhupada's mood about bathing and residing at Radha Kund. So, have any of you been there to Radha Kund? Have you taken bath there in Radha Kund? Any hands? Yes, Madam, but I did drop Several people, all oh, you, you've all, you've all went to Radha Kund. Did you take your bath there, everyone? Did you get permission? You, I have take bath. Did you get permission from your guru to take bath? Did you get permission? How many of you got permission from your guru to take bath? Not many hands up. Does that Maharaj, mean? My, my, my Guru Maharaj told me that I, I can uh, uh, just, uh, you know, put myself uh, three drops of the, of the Radha Kund. <laughs> your Guru Maharaj told you, take three drops on your head, right? Right. <laughs> so you didn't... Yes, yes, Maharaj. But what about the others? You took bath, huh? All right. Anyway, we'll see Prabhupada's instructions here. Who would like to read? Ganga Prasad, will read? Yes, Maharaj. In 1976, Sila Prabhupada was questioned about bathing in Radha Kul. Was it all right? He gave assent and guidelines how it must be done with utmost reverence and respect. The Buddhists went and a number of them began to spot, splashing and behave frivolously. Slavopa found out, became furious and banned baiting in Radha Kun. However, Slavopa spoke from Sri Upadeshamrita and the Acharyas commentary clearly enjoined us to take bath there. What is to be done? Slapapa gave permission according to time, place and circumstance and we do it likewise. Go ahead. Injunction, however, to bathe in Radhapun is set down in scripture in a permanent form, including Prabhupada's purpose. We can understand Prabhupada's anger had to do with the neophyte attitude of enjoying spirit, offensive to Srimati Radharani, to the spiritual principles of Bhakti in Radhapur. The conclusion is that we should adopt the serious, mature, reverential move desired by the Acharyas, but there for our eternal spiritual benefits. A ray of Vishnu preface. Rupa Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, Maharaj. So, very clear there that, that you actually you should get permission from your guru before you do it, because your guru will know if you're qualified to bathe in Radha Kund or not. We should be qualified, we should be very serious and mature and have that proper reverential mood. Otherwise, we, Prabhupada said, we just kick Radharani in the face. That's very offensive. So, Sr. 
Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati and Bhakti Vinod Thakur, they have a house in Radhakund. So sometimes they would stay there. And it was mentioned one time Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada gave a lecture to the Babaji's there at Radhakund. So they came, but when they heard that he was speaking on the Upanishads, they all left because they, they, they just wanted to hear about Gopi Bhava. They just wanted to hear about Leelas. They didn't want to hear philosophy. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati described this Radha Kund has become a place for neophytes or Sahajas. Many people, they go there and they imitate Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami was living there and he would take bath three times a day in the Radha Kund. And so many people, they go there and they try to imitate Raghunath Das, but they're not on the spiritual standard of someone like Raghunath Das Goswami, who is a very great devotee. Now what some of the devotees do when they go to Radha Kund, I know Govinda Maharaj took a group of his disciples there one time and they cleaned everything around Radha Kund. They, they got brooms and buckets of water and they cleaned, they swept everything around the Radha Kund, made it nice and clean. So that's one, one way you can go there and do service for Radha Kund. Another thing you can do is do parikrama around, do dandabat parikrams around Radha Kund. Offering obeisances as you go around the Radha Kund. Or just simply go around the Radha Kund and offer obeisances. Just as we circumambulate Tosi, we can circumambulate Radha Kund. It's not that we have to all go in and take bath there. As Prabhu said, we can take three drops and put them on our head and offer obeisances. But if you're strongly desiring to enter in and take bath, Get the permission, get the sanction from your guru, and then you can do it. Hmm? Someone like to read this? Can I, conti can I continue, Maharaj? Well, uh, we've got some other people, give them a chance. Okay, Maharaj, thank you. Jyoti Radha Maharaj. Who? Jyoti Radha Maharaj. Jyoti Radha? Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu never talked to the gopis publicly. The real Vrindavan is not to eat prasadam and sleep, but to follow the advice of Vrindavan Chandra and broadcast his message. That is the that is his message. This that is Vrindavan. Vrindavan Dham is worshipable. Don't commit commit an offense here. Take it as Chintamani Dham. Krishna Narottam Das Thakur says to see Vrindavan is not possible with Vishaya. So we should we should take the shelter of Gauranitai, become cleansed of eating, sleeping and mating. Then you will see Vrindavan. Don't commit offenses here. There is a special influence in Vrindavan. SPL 43 beginning the temple of Krishna Balaram. Right. Prabhupada lecture at the beginning of the Krishna Balaram temple. And Prabhupada quotes Naratam Das Thakur that it's not possible with Vishaya. Vishaya meaning material desire. So long as we have material desire, we cannot see the holy Dham. And so Prabhupada was very concerned. We should behave properly and we should develop the purity. And so don't commit offenses. Very important. Okay. Someone like to read? Let's have someone else read. Kirti Mataji. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes, Prabhu. Before Bhava, surrender is dis disturbed by anarthas and apradhas. Attainment of vow is a big step in diksha or advanced mind. Diksha is complete when one comes to bhava. At this point, Krishna accepts the devotee on the same level as himself. 
and the devotee becomes eligible to serve Krishna with his transcendental senses. When the devotee enters Bhav, he can meditate on the pastimes at Radha Kund and can stay there. Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, No one should take Babaji unless he has reached the stage of Bhav, because only then one can always chant and remember the pastimes of Radha Kund. Giriraj Swami. Thank you. So no one should take Babaji. Babaji is a very ele ba Babaji is the final stage of renounced life, the topmost stage. So no Prabhupada or Bhaktivinoda Thakur said, Babaji means you have to be on the stage of Baba. That, to come to that level of Baba, you have to be very pure, and you have to be very fixed and steady in your Krishna consciousness. All right. A little more, yeah. Someone like to read? Russian Pradhan. Russian Prabhu. Okay. Of many times, or of the many objects of favored delight, and. Of all the lovable damsels of Braj Bhumi, Srimati Radharani is certainly the most treasured object of Krishna's love, and in every respect, her divine Kunda is described by great sages as similarly dear to him. Undoubtedly, Radha Kunda is very rare, rarely attained even by the great devotees. Therefore, it is even more difficult for ordinary devotees to attain. If one simply bathes once within those holy waters, one's pure love of Krishna is fully aroused. Yeah. Then why? Yeah. Uh, letter of instruction, text 11. Yes. Right? Someone else like to read? Chopa Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. In these statements about devotional service, sometimes it may appear that the results have been overestimated. But actually, there is no overestimation. Some devotees, as revealed scriptures give evidence, have had immediate results by such association, although this is not possible for all. For example, the Kumaras immediately became devotees simply by smelling the incense in the temple. Go ahead. So these statements are, on, are not overestimations, nor are they stories. They are actual facts, but are true for certain devotees and do not necessarily apply to all. These descriptions even if considered overestimations, must be taken as they are in order to divert our attention from the fleeting material beauty to the eternal beauty of Krishna consciousness. And for a person who is already in contact with Krishna consciousness, the described results are not unusual. Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 13. All right. So important to remember that these things which are being described, they're not for everyone, but they do happen. If one simply bathes once within those holy waters, one's pure love of Krishna is fully aroused. How does one take the kind of bath described here? Right? Bathe once, a love of Krishna is fully aroused. Giri Raj Maharaj explains, he said, follow all of the nectar of instructions, instructions in the previous texts. If we follow all of these things, if we go through all of the previous stages, then pure love will manifest. Right? We have to follow carefully. 
What is described in text 10 is Baba Bhakti, preliminary stage of love of God. Swarup Siddhi, one lives in the body, but within the body one has realization of Krishna, of our eternal spiritual form and of our service to him. But one is not qualified to enter Krishna's pastimes. At Vastu Siddhi, one enters Krishna's pastimes. At the same time, one should be following the line of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, we have to follow Lord Chaitanya. Lord Chaitanya taught us, chant Hare Krishna, preach Krishna consciousness, and at the same time develop love for Krishna. Quotation here. When devotional service is situated on the transcendental platform of pure goodness, it is like a ray of the sunlight of love for Krishna. At such a time, devotional service causes the heart to be softened by various tastes and it is called bhava or emotion. So, defining what is bhava? The heart becomes soft, pure goodness, transcendental platform of pure goodness. All right, someone like to read? Nice quote here, Srila Prabhupada. Anuradha Priya. Anuradha Priya, yeah? This body you can utilize for sense gratification. Just generally people are doing, eating, sleeping, meeting and drinking and so on. So you can utilize this body. This is, that is material. But if you engage this body for the service of the Lord, it became spiritualized. As I have already explained, the eye grows constantly in touch with fire. It becomes and become red hot. That is fire. At that time, it is fire. You touch that red hot iron rod anywhere. But similarly, this body can be spiritualized, although material body. Now I start to eat in Hyderabad, November. All right. So body can be spiritualized just by engaging in devotional service, by contact with the service of the Lord. Giri Rajmara says, we may be chanting in Namabhas, but we benefit tremendously. We become liberated from material contamination and sinful reactions. But when we chant in Sudhanam, we realize our relationship with Krishna. When we are in Bhava Bhakti, we are qualified for this kind of bath. Although respectful bathing before Bhava Bhakti will also be greatly beneficial. <laughs> so Giri Raj Maharaji is saying, you know, even you're not at Bhava Bhakti, but if you bathe respectfully, then it's beneficial to you to take bath. Just like chanting the holy name, you know, we're not chanting the pure nam, we're not doing shuddha nam, we're maybe doing nama bas. So, it's beneficial. It's, it's very helpful. It's not the, like we don't chant. Someone read, please. Om like Madhikari Om Prabhu. Yes, Maharaj. By devotional service, only one is elevated to the transcendental planet Goloka Vrindavana. And there also there is only devotional service 
for the activities of devotional service both in this world and in the spiritual world are one and the same devotional service does not change the example of the mango can be given here if one gets an unripe mango it is still a mango and when it is ripe it remains the same mango but it has become more more tasteful just full and relishable similarly there is devotional service performed according to the direction of the spiritual master and the injunction and regulative principles of shastra and there is devotional service in the spiritual world rendered directly in the association with the supreme personality of godhead but they are both in the both same there is no change the difference is that one stage is unripe and the other is ripe and the more relishable shrimad bhagavatam fourth canto ninth chapter purport of text 11 here you can see a diagram showing the progression. You can see in the bottom the unripe mango, and then the mango is becoming ripe, a little sweet sour, and on the top you've got the, the fully ripened mango. So on the bottom we've got surrender and association of devotees, and then doing sadhana bhakti, devotional practice, then coming up to bhava bhakti and then prima bhakti, pure love. So the example of the mango is shown there. And here on the right, the different stages from shraddha to sadhu sangha, bhajana kriya, anartha nivriti, nishta, ruchi, asakti, bhava and prima. Right? So we want to come up. <laughs> you can see increasing sweetness. So we explained the hierarchy of spiritual places, right? You're all clear about that? I think we explained why the gopis are considered the most exalted of all the devotees because they sacrificed everything for the pleasure of Krishna. And they didn't want anything in return. And why Srimati Radharani is the most dear to the Lord? Because she has the greatest love for Krishna of all the gopis. She has the most love and she gives him the most pleasure. And Prabhupada's mood towards bathing and residing at Radha Kund. You can do it, but do it with the utmost care and respect and caution. Remember, any offences committed there, you get severe reactions, a hundred times or a thousand times what you would normally get for an offence. So you have to be very pure and qualified to live in such a holy place. Okay, how are we doing on the time? Okay. I think pretty much we've finished here tonight, Prabhu. Yes, are there any questions now? Do we have any questions? Okay, on the chat we have a question. Yeah, I'm familiar. I've heard of Swami Narayan people before. I know they don't chant Krishna's name, they chant Swami Narayan's name. But they're very well organized and they're very efficient in building temples. 
If someone wants to build, a, if they want to build a temple somewhere, they have like a factory and they ship all the parts and pieces and you can build your temple yourself. They have all the parts and pieces ready and they just ship it to you and you can put up your temple. They're good at I that. I think the question, he's added the question right below the... Okay. Now. Did Prabhupada or any of our previous Acharyas explain anything about the Akshaya Purushottam Sampradaya? And how do we need to deal with their philosophy? Ak Ak Akshara Purushottam Sampradaya. Oh, is, is that the Sampradaya of the Swami Narayan? Yes, Maharaj. No, I don't know. No, Prabhupada never mentioned it. Prabhupada never mentioned it. They were not very prominent in Prabhupada's time. After Prabhupada left only, they became more prominent and more active. But they're very organized and very good in, you know, taking, getting money, you know. Their people, many of their, their members, they're in the diamond business. They, so they, they, they make quite good money and they're quite good in construction as well. There's big communities of them in places like uh, Mombasa in Kenya, there's a number of them there. They came originally from Kutch and Buj in Gujarat. But, you know, I don't see any links to, you know, I don't know, their Sampradaya is not connected to, you know, there are four bona fide Vaishnav Sampradayas, there's no mention of their Sampradaya. I don't know where it comes from. Then how do we need to deal with them, Maharaj? Well, we deal with them, you know, we see Krishna in their heart, we offer respects to them, and you know, just keep a distance from them. You don't need to associate with them. You don't want to go and hear from them. Sometimes, sometimes I know in the past, they would ask our devotees to come there and, and, pre and give the class to their people. But that was quite a long time ago. I think uh, in recent times they're much more organized and they've got their own preachers. And they don't have a, you know, generally it's more of a, a, so, a community thing. Their members are all from the one community. You know, generally they're Gujaratis. They have managed to build up some schools. I saw down in Andhra Pradesh, they've got a big school there, I think. So, but you go to, if you go to, they have some places, they have like a big, it looks like a town. You go in, there's nothing going on, you know, it's just a statue of Swami Narayan, and you know, and they don't, you know, you don't, you don't, you just wonder what is it, you know, what's going on? Nothing. <laughs> But they do have their... But they are comparing exactly their, their deities are actually like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu only Radha Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how our deities are there. They are similarly Swami Narayan and Radha Krishna they are putting. Yes. Yes, I know. No, they, they even built a big temple in London. And they got, the, they got the Queen of England to come there and the Prime Minister of England went there two or three times, because they... Uh, they 100 uh, temples and uh, 3,800 uh, centers are also there, uh, it's very common. No? Well, they're a big community. Gujaratis are spread all over the world, you see. Generally, 98% Gujarati, all from the one community, from the Kutch, from Buj. If anybody comes with that philosophy, then how can we deal with that philosophy? Well, you can ask them, what, what is your scripture? Do they have any, what scripture do they use? Usually, they may use... They are using Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, all the Vedas, they are bringing that only and same thing. Okay, so we don't need to disturb them, you know, they have their philosophy, just leave them. Better just to keep a distance from them, you know. And 
we have some friendship with them. You know, they're, they're doing their preaching, we do our preaching. No problems. Organized. They're very well organized. We learn, we, we can learn from them how to organize nicely. Yes, ma'am. All right. Tukaram Prabhu has a question. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, I have a question. In the chat you mentioned that uh, in Vaikuntha there is uh, uh, Shantaras and Dastaras and Gaurav Sakharas. And uh, Maharaj, like uh, relationship between Narayana and Lakshmi, so that is conjugal relationship. So that is also part of Vaikuntha. So is it correct? Well, is it or is it just a Dasharas? Relationship between Lakshmi and Narayan. What is you we see Lakshmi what's she doing? She's on the she's massaging the feet of Lord Narayan. Right? That's Dasharas. Right? She's in the mood of the servant of Lord Narayan. Can't we say like just like relationship between Krishna and Rukmini is Swakya conjugal relationship? So Lakshmi and Narayan also Swakya cannot like like is it said is can it be interpreted like that? Swakya they're married. Yeah, well, if you like, generally, you know. We, we see the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu discussed what did Lakshmi do? You know, Lakshmi went to Vrindavan to do tapasya because she wanted to get into Rasa Leela, right? So she went to she went to Vrindavan, Vrindavan to do tapasya to try to get entrance into Rasa Leela, and she's she for a long time she spent there in Vrindavan doing austerity to try to qualify to get into Rasa Leela. But she couldn't do it. She couldn't enter into Rasa Leela. Why not? Because she's the goddess of fortune. She's a queen. She's opulent. She cannot take the mood of the gopis. You want to enter into Rasa Leela, you have to have the mood of the gopis. You have to be willing to become like a cowherd woman. And even the personified Vedas, they wanted to enter into Rasa Leela. They had to take birth as gopis. And then only in the body of the gopis they could take part in Rasa Leela. So Lakshmi, she cannot give up her queenly opulence. So that's the point to understand about Lakshmi. She wants. But it's not her name. Therefore she got the blessing that she could reside as a line on the chest of the Lord. But generally we see Lakshmi massaging the feet of the Lord. Right? Lakshmi is the consort of Lord Narayan. But yeah, you could say it's conjugal. You could say there's some is conjugal because they're married, but her mood is servant, just like Krishna's queens in Dwarka. Krishna's queens in Dwarka, they live in Dwarka, but their mood is we are servants of Lord Krishna. They have the mood of being maid servants of Krishna. Although they're all married to Krishna, their mood is as the servant of Krishna. Of course, that, that mood is there in conjugal love. In conjugal love, that mood of being the servant is also there. All the rasas are there in conjugal ras. So the mood of being the servant, the mood of being the friend, the mood of being the maintainer, it's all there within con conjugal ras. But you don't find the Lord in Vaikuntha, that you, we don't hear about the Lord's pastimes with the Lakshmi. I don't know, I haven't heard anyway, you know. We don't hear, 
It's not like Krishna with the gopis. Krishna's, you know, the pastimes of Lord Krishna, which are performed for the pleasure of his devotees. The devotees get great pleasure from just taking part in the Lord's pastimes or witnessing the Lord's pastimes. The gopis get pleasure from seeing Krishna with Radharani. We don't hear about the goddesses of fortune getting pleasure from seeing Lakshmi with Lord Narayan. But the gopis, they're happy to make arrangements for Lord Krishna to be with Srimati Radharani. And Radharani, she will make arrangements for other gopis to be with Krishna. So very special dealings which take place between Krishna and the gopis. We don't, we, you don't find these kind of dealings between the Lord, Lord Narayan and Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune. It's a different mood. That's the point. So the predominant mood in Vaikuntha is Dasyaras. Although they're married, the mood is mainly Dasyaras. You know, some women are like that. Some men are very lucky. They have a wife. She's simply the servant. You know, she simply serves her husband. Understand? Yes, Maharaj. Okay, on the chat we have another question. Does, does devotees in other rasas also experience separation? I've never heard of it. Devotees in other rasas, do they experience separation? Well, the cowherd boys, you could say the cowherd boys, they experience some separation. Yeah, they're very attached to Krishna. But it's not in the intensity of the separation of the gopis. The, the, the mood, the, you know, the, the fire of separation felt by the gopis due to their intense attachment and love of Krishna was much, much greater than the mood of separation which the other rasas feel. Although it can also be there, but certainly Mother Yashoda also felt separation from Krishna. Mother Yashoda's eyes were all, she, always filled with tears after Krishna left Vrindavan to go to Mathura. Mother Yashoda was always crying for Krishna. She couldn't stop crying for Krishna. So that separation was there also, but it was particularly highlighted among the gopis. And that was what was described in Srimad Bhagavatam to us. And Lord Krishna also sent Uddhava there and Balaram there to pacify all the residents of Vrindavan. Because all the residents of Vrindavan were feeling separation for, for Krishna. But they particularly noticed the intense affection of the gopis and particularly Srimati Radharani. And we have that incident where Radharani begins speaking to the bumblebee, describing the bumblebee as being a messenger from Lord Krishna. So this kind of ecstasy, of course, it's all ecstasies. And we, said, we heard this evening how Srimati Radharani has the greatest ecstasy in love for Krishna. Right? Another question, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please explain those two terms. Oh, Vatsu Siddhi and Swarupa Siddhi. Vatsu Siddhi. Vatsu Siddhi, I don't know that term. Vastu. Vastu, is it? Vastu city. In the slide it was there. In the slide it was there. Vastu city and Swarupa city. Well, Swarupa city is our eternal form. Right? Our eternal form in relationship to Krishna in the spiritual world. That's Swarupa city. Our eternal form. That, you know, somebody is a gopi, somebody is a cow, somebody may be a tree. We can take different forms for the service of Krishna. In the spiritual world, all the living entities are pure devotees and all different forms of life are there. And 
these different living entities, they can change their bodies also, they can change their form simply for the pleasure and for the service of Krishna. So that's Swarupa Siddhi, the spiritual form. Vastu Siddhi, Vastu, Vastu Siddhi, I don't know. At the Baba stage? The Vastu Siddhi is not there, but in the brain stage, that is Vastu Siddhi. Mm. Vastu Siddhi, oh, okay. So the love of God, one has got that Vastu Siddhi, perfection. One has come to that perfection while still in the material body. Swarupa Siddhi is spiritual body. Vastu Siddhi, you still have the body. You're still embodied in this material world, but you've become perfect. Right? Okay. Any other questions? Still have five minutes? I have an announcement. Hmm? After this last question, you can announce before the end of the session. Yes? Dinavasa Prabhu has a question. Comforts for Krishna consciousness. That his question is: Could a a new or neophyte devotee do also this preaching? All right. So the question is: uh, I was talking how the devotees on Sankirtan are like in the mood of the gopis because they're sacrificing everything for the pleasure of Krishna and trying to distribute love of Krishna and Krishna consciousness to others. So he's asking, can a neophyte devotee also, can they also what? Can a neophyte devotee also do preaching? Oh, can, can a neophyte devotee also be a preacher? Can he also be in the mood of the gopis? <laughs> Well, yeah, uh, uh, preaching and thus be in the mood of the gopis. Well, we do have that, you know, in, in our ISKCON society, we try to, we, we try to prepare devotees for preaching. We try to give them some training, some education, study the basic knowledge. To preach Krishna consciousness, you don't need to know very much. You just need to be able to use what you know. And just like, you know, if you know you're not the body, you know, that's a good, that's a good start, a good thing to talk to people about in the public, in ordinary people, you know, to, if you go up to people and tell them, you know, you're not the body, you know, it, it's a shock to people, it's something new to them. And so even a new devotee can do this kind of preaching. You don't have to be a big scholar. You don't have to know a lot to preach Krishna consciousness. But you have to be convinced, you have to believe what you're saying, and then you can make an, the right impression on people. So anybody can be a preacher, Krishna consciousness. You know Krishna is God and we are Krishna's servant, that's preaching. There was a little girl, when the first devotees went to uh, England for preaching, then later on they went to um, India also for preaching, there was one couple, they had a young child, little girl, only a few years old, and she would walk around with a picture of Krishna and say, this is God, he is God, we are his servants. And Prabhupada heard, he said, this is expert preaching, he said, this is the best preaching. So yes, a new devotee can also preach. But it's important to also behave. So sometimes new devotees don't quite know how, they don't know how to behave so well. So the training is also important. People have to be taught how to behave properly, not to be reckless and not to be wild and 
to be polite and mannered, respectful. Hmm. So these are some points. But yeah, everybody, everyone who comes to the Krishna Consciousness Movement, they should be given an opportunity to, to do some preaching. Because this is our family business. Book distribution, take some books and go out and talk to people about Krishna. It's a very satisfying experience. If you can get someone to take a book and if you can make someone into a devotee, it's very satisfying to bring someone to Krishna consciousness. Okay, thank you very much. All right, so we'll finish here tonight. Are we going to have class tomorrow? But, well, I could I could do text number eleven. All right, we, we could do that tomorrow. Night. It's just Thank about rather fun. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Okay, so we'll have one one final class tomorrow night. We have one cl final class tomorrow night, text number 11, to go through everything, finish off everything nicely. So please look over your notes, and if you have any questions, you can bring them with you tomorrow night. Okay? Prabhu? So I can close here? Okay. Hare Krishna everyone. Please remain just two minutes more for an announcement. So, uh, I hope... Oh, they ended the meeting. They ended the meeting. <laughs> oh, Krishna. How do I close this? My PowerPoint's not closing. PowerPoint is not closing? Yeah. Uh, you mean the slideshow? Yeah. What should I press? The slideshow is closed, Maharaj. But to... Just a second. The slideshow is closed, Maharaj. You want to edit I've, PowerPoint, right? Yeah, I want it to... Yes, that would... But that see, would. I'm clicking that. It's not closing. No, yeah, no, no it will close. See. No, it will close? No, it's asking, I think some change was made, so it's asking whether you want to save the change or, or not save the change. Mm, don't save. Okay, then you can click on save. That's it. It's closed. Okay. Thank you. And then is room closed? Yes, room is closed. Okay. Okay. So I think it's good. We'll meet tomorrow night, finish everything off, find yes. out.